Revit has a great interference checking tool that allows you to make certain your conduit isn't going through a column or that your light fixtures aren't in the same location as an air register. But what about checking against clearance requirements? Your basic Revit families don't do this, but it doesn't mean they can't. We just have to edit the existing family and add this functionality. It's an easy process and it takes a lot less time than validating clearances by hand. Welcome to another Revit family tip. I'm David Atkins. Adding clearance areas to an existing family is pretty simple and only requires a few steps. I'm going to start by opening up an existing panel in the electrical system. We're going to grab this lighting and appliance panel board, 480 volt MCB surface, because it rolls so nicely off the tongue. Because I'm editing a family in the default Revit library, it'll open read-only. This is normal and just means we'll need to save as before we begin, something we should be doing anyway. I'm going to save the file into my custom Revit library, where I'm going to give it the name Panelboard 480 volt MCB Surface Clearance. Now my plan is to create a new 3D solid that encompasses the volume my clearance needs to watch out for. In order for this to work out really well, I'm going to create a custom material called clearance that I can later on apply to the new solid. I'm going to go to the Manage tab in the ribbon and open up the materials browser. I don't want my clearance to be solid. I want it to be semi-transparent. So I'm going to start with a glass material. If you right click on the material, you can select duplicate and give it the name clearance. Inside this material, I'm going to make a number of changes. First, I'm going to change the information inside the Identity tab. I'll change the name to Clearance, and put it into the generic class. If I have a keynote I'd like to associate for it, this is a good time to do that. In the Appearance tab, I want to duplicate the asset. If I don't, it's going to adjust it both here and in the glass material which I definitely don't want to do. With that set up, I can make the changes that I want to make to make sure everything is consistent. I'm going to set this to a reflectance of 1, and there's only one sheet of make-believe glass, and I'm going to set the color to red. The preview looks a little weird up here, so I'm going to change the scene from curtain wall to a cube. And that is what it will eventually look like. Since I'm going to eventually use this for many families, I'm going to go into each tab and make sure all the data is nice and clean. Taking care of this now will save me time the next time I use it. Not forgetting to duplicate the assets before I start, so I don't overwrite the wrong material. While I don't need to change these properties, it wouldn't hurt anything to change these values to zero, because this doesn't have a Young's modulus or any of that fun stuff, because it's really just empty space. Same thing for these thermal properties. It's not required, but I'm still going to do it so it's nice and clean. Not all of these values will go to zero, but it's not a big deal. With these properties set, I'm going to go to the Graphics tab. Check the box under Render Appearance. This will set the color to match what I've set in the Appearance tab, in this case red, but it's going to make it a little bit too transparent. So I'll then uncheck it, change the transparency to something closer to 50. Now I can click Apply to save my changes. Finally, I'm going to right click the new material and select Add to Favorites. Since this isn't the first time I've done this, I will overwrite the one that's already there. And now you can see the clearance material in my favorites and ready for any clearances that I need to make. With the material created, I'm now ready to start making my clearance extrusion. I'm going to do this in the 3D view of this family. I'm going to go to the 3D tab in the ribbon and start the create extrusion command. I need to set the plane that I'm drawing my profile on, so I'll put it on the face of the panel. I'll be using the Pick Lines tool in the draw box, being sure to choose the lock option in the options bar, 
and then I'll simply click the edges around the panel. Oops, looks like I got an extra one, so I'll just get rid of it. I'm not too worried about the distances that are assigned to this. I'm going to create a parameter for it in a moment, so I can just hit the green checkbox to finish up the extrusion. Different locations have different code requirements, so the clearance might change. Because of this, I'm going to set this up as a parameter. By opening up the family type dialog, I can start a new parameter. I'm going to call it clearance depth and leave the rest with the default settings. Three feet is a reasonable default, so I'll go ahead and set that now. I'm also going to set this as an instance parameter for testing. Whether you choose one or the other will depend on how variable your clearance requirements really are. For this example, making it an instance parameter will give me more opportunities to make changes on the fly. With that set, I can click OK. Now I can click on the extrusion and assign the extrusion in value to my new clearance depth parameter. I do always like to make sure that my base is locked as well, so I'll just drag the arrow up and back onto the panel face and lock it in place to make sure it grows and shrinks correctly. Now I just need to add our new material to the clearance extrusion. If we take a look at the new family's different visual styles, we should see everything displaying how we expect it to. Excellent. One last thing I want to do is remove this clearance from most view directions. I'm going to click the extrusion, open up visibility settings, and decide where I'd prefer to see it. I'm going to turn it off from front, back, left, and right. Plan view should be fine, but I really just want to see it in a 3D view and only when I'm in a coarse level of detail. You might choose something different. No worries. Let's save the changes and give it a quick test. I'll put together a quick test project using the construction template. I'll draw a wall and place a column in front of it. Now I can go back to my family and load it into my new project. Sticking it on the wall in front of the column, now we can test it. Go to the Collaborate tab and let's run an interference check. We want to compare the equipment against columns and click OK. And great! Even though it's not visible in this view, it still finds and reports the interference, which is exactly what we want. If we go to a 3D view and set the detail level to course, we can see the clearance and where it's located. That's how you can add clearance areas to your Revit families. And you can use this technique for any other clearances that you need to check against. Now that you have your material created and it's in your favorites, you can skip that step for any other families you need to add this to. Just open the family, add the new extrusion, and assign it to the clearance material. Did you find this useful? Then click the like button so YouTube knows to suggest it to others who might need it. Do you handle clearances differently? I'd like to hear about it in the comments. And this wouldn't be a YouTube channel if I didn't ask you to hit subscribe. And of course, if you're interested in any of my AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Civil 3D, MicroStation, 3DS Max, Fusion 360, or SketchUp classes, find out more at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy catting.